Good morning, everyone. I'm Patricia Wright, a prayer chaplain here at Unity Center of Davis, and it's my pleasure to welcome all of you today to our service. We are blessed this morning to have Reverend Rich lead us in meditation and the message, and David Trolley provide us with such beautiful music every single Sunday. And we are so grateful that you are here to experience the wonderful community that is Unity Center of Davis. And our opening song, David. Thank you so much, Pat. And, uh, you know, I don't know if we've sung this at Unity Center of Davis, but we're going to give it a roll. This comes out of the uh, uh, Wings of Song hymnal. Um, and if you want to tune into that, it's number 183. I am the radiant life of God. I am, I am, I am. I am the radiant life of God. I am, I am, I am. The health of God, the strength of God, vitality, energy, vim of God. I am the radiant life of God. I am, I am, I am. I am the wonderful love of God. I am, I am, I am. I am the wonderful love of God, I am, I am, I am. The peace of God, the joy of God, serenity, harmony, rhythm of God. I am the wonderful love of God, I am, I am, I am. I am the wisdom and power of God, I am, I am, I am. I am the wisdom and power of God, I am, I am, I am. The light of God, success of God, prosperity, happiness, might of God. I am the wisdom and power of God. I am, I am, I am. I am, I am, I am. You're muted, Pat. Pat, you're, there you happens go. to me all the time forgive me so let's just take a moment and settle in right here right now as we reflect upon and fully accept the words we just sang bring these words into your heart and into your soul i am the radiant life of god i am the health of god the strength of god I am the vitality, energy, and vim of God. I am the peace of God, the joy of God, the serenity, harmony, and rhythm of God. I am the prosperity. I am the joy. I am all of this. And all of you are too. I see all these characteristics in the faces of this beloved community. We all see these characteristics in our family, our friends, and the community. We see them with the eyes of God, knowing that the power of God is working for good in this community and the world. And so it is. Amen. And now, 
we welcome our prayer chaplain this morning, Marsha Chicado. Thank you, Marsha, for serving us today. And I turn things over to you. Thank you, Cam. It is my pleasure to be in service today as prayer chaplain. And one thing I wanted to highlight for sure, all of us wish to, is how you can stay in touch and request prayer support. Um, you can put your name and phone number in the chat today, and I would get back. I will get back to you. And we want you to know clearly that over the course of the week, we also will are responding to prayer requests, and you can do that in um, two different ways: going on the e news site or the website and make that request for prayer. Whether you'd like a call whether you would like us to um, add you to our prayer list, uh, we can forward to Silent Unity, whatever that might be, you have an opportunity to request that. So um, we're looking forward to holding you in prayer around special intentions. So, um, you know, you could seek that out if you wish to. We would be delighted to uh, make a call. Thank you. And we just take that breath now and focus into this time. It's our time in our service where we hold those that are in our hearts in the affirmative process of prayer. That affirmative words that are the truth of where we are having our being and who we are. So in this moment, we bring into our awareness anyone that is in your heart for support or for celebration right in this moment. And you may speak their name aloud or silently. And let us affirm together that we are one with divine love, always connected to the spirit and to each other. We, we call on that divine power, that divine presence right here and affirm that it is available to each of us now and always and to those that we are praying for. And we know that we are blessed and filled with that divine love and gratitude. Thank you, Spirit. Amen. And now let us say our blessing for the world together. We love you. We bless you. We appreciate you and we behold God's love as you, amen. And now let us prepare for meditation.
can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of God is in this place. Surely the presence of God is in this place. Deep, deep breath in, deep breath in, and hold it for just a moment, and exhale. Focusing on the breath now, breathing in and out. Breathing in and out and settling in. This is your time. This is your place. This is your time to connect. For surely, surely the presence of God is in this place. Surely the presence of God is everywhere that we are. And surely the presence of God is everywhere that we're not. I invite you now to open to that presence of God, to be the presence of God. I am the radiant light of God. I am. I am. I am all that God is. I am the radiant light of God in my human experience. And I breathe into that. One more deep breath in and hold it. Hold it and on the exhale, let the shoulders drop and the belly drop and exhale and relax into the presence of God, into the radiant light of God, into the power, the presence, the prosperity. I am the harmony of God. I am the strength of God. I am the love of God. Surely the presence of God is in this place. I can feel that mighty power and that grace. I feel it within me now, for I am that power. I am that grace. Surely the presence, surely the presence of God is in this place. In the silent place, the presence of God is there as well. In the sacred place of the Most High, I dwell in the presence and power of God, in the radiant light that I am in this human experience. I take that presence with me. I take that radiant light with me into the silence. And know, know that I am one with God. I am the radiant light of God in the silence. Breathing in, breathing out. I am the radiant light of God. Slowly coming back to this human experience in the presence and power of God, in the presence and power of the universe. I am the radiant light of God. Grateful for the knowledge, grateful for the willingness to take the time to relax and breathe, grateful to be in this human experience, the radiant light of God. 
I am all that God is. I am one with the universe. I am one with God. Breathing in and out now and slowly coming back to this time and place, we wiggle our fingers and wiggle our toes and move our shoulder up and down and the other shoulder as well. And slowly we lick our lips and moisten them and slowly open our eyes and come back to this time and place and say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. Well, good morning again. Um, this song is about just exactly what we've been talking about, um, staying open to the love of God, the, the fact that, that God is in each one of us and that all possibilities exist. Bustling world, racing time, illusions on the outside cloud my mind. But I'm still wide open to this changing world I see, to the awakening of humanity, to the truth in unity. I can change my thoughts, change my mind, find a quiet place inside where peace and love abide. Pray for higher guidance and ask for what I need. I hear the voice of spirit urging me to be wide open like a great and mighty sea, wide open to the love that flows through me, wide open to all possibilities wide open to the God that lives in me. The universe is good, it's always on my side. And love and peace and gratitude will always be my guide. and love abide and pray for higher guidance just ask for what I need I hear the voice of spirit urging me to be wide open like a great and mighty sea be wide open to the love that flows through me and wide open to all possibility just be wide open to the God that lives in me. It's always on my side And love and peace and gratitude Will always be my guide I'm wide open like a great and mighty sea Be wide open to the love that flows through me And wide open to all possibilities Just be wide open to the God that lives in me I'm wide open, wide open, wide open. Music Ministry of David Trolley. Thank you, David. That was wonderful. Thank you. 
Patricia, thank you for being the platform person this morning. It's always wonderful to have you here. And Cam, thank you for the announcements. You do such a great job. Thank you. And Marcia Chicado, our prayer chaplain, thank you so much. Kevin on the uh, Zoom operation, Bob McAvoy on the recording, and everybody else that's here, thank you for being here. John Duffy on the slides. John Duffy on the slides. Let's give him a hand, everybody. Where would we be without the slides? <laughs> well, thank you, John, for reminding me. Because are we wide open this morning? Are you wide open? We've been wide open, haven't we? We've had to be. Actually, I realized recently how closed I was. I couldn't believe how close I was. It was like waking up again. I had to get wide open again. I had to open myself up to the universe. I had to open myself up to the planet. I had to open myself up to being in the midst of this human experience. I had to open myself up to opening stores and cars and people on the streets and restaurants and and masks or no masks. But we'll get back to that in a moment. I asked you to open up wide today and let's take a look at where we are. How are we in community in 2021? Actually, we've been in community different ways in 2021. And I should say, how are we in community on May the 15th, 16th, 2021? Because it could change tomorrow, couldn't it? And it has changed on a daily basis sometimes over the past year. But I wanted to go back and take a look uh, at where we were last year because I did a talk on July 25th last year. I'm sure you all remember it word by word. I'm positive of it. Yeah, thank you. Marcia Chicada is pulling out her notes from it. Absolutely. She's, she took copious notes. And uh, But just in case you don't remember it, some of the things we talked about, because if you think back to July 25th, We'd been in uh, April, May, June, July. We'd been doing virtual Sunday for about four months. Everything had changed. Uh, we were hunkered down. We were pretty well hunkered down everywhere. Uh, we didn't know what was going on. And so the service started, my talk started on July 25th by saying, hey, everybody, get ready. We're going to take a community picture. No time to change clothes. And you've seen that community picture on our website. It's a great picture and a very inviting picture. And then the next thing was we took a poll. And one of the questions on the poll was, Do you, would you be interested in having a Christmas Eve church service this year? And a bunch of people said yes. And guess what? We had a beautiful Christmas Eve church service with a bunch of people there and families and uh I can't remember if Santa Claus made an appearance, but I think I was in a Hawaiian shirt in LA and uh, I had a good time. I hope you did too. And then I, I said on that Sunday that I had done quite a bit of research for my talk that Sunday and I didn't find anything that I didn't know or anything new. And that in this ministry, we had already implemented everything that we could implement for where we were in community at that time. And so uh, I even lamented that uh, creating a virtual community is new to everyone and that, oh, much to my chagrin, ministers have all in a way become televangelists. Even I've become a televangelist. Now, I wouldn't quite compare myself to Jimmy Swaggart or Pat Robertson or those, but I get to be a televangelist. I, I never wanted to be a televangelist, but here I am. And... And we said, how do we keep our congregants interested? How do we keep people who visit, keep them coming back? Like Carrie McKenna is here, who's here for the first time today. Welcome, Carrie. So good to see you. One of my friends from Seattle. Always good to see Carrie here. Keep your eye on him, old folks. He could be trouble. And, um, and so what do we do with people who come and how do we get them to come back? And then I said, you know what? We should be very proud of ourselves as a ministry. And I went on to extol our, our successes, and I want to say it again, because we did quite a good job of keeping our community together, and we've done that ever since. 
ninety five percent of our regular and not so regular attendees had already found their way to zoom for sun sunday services and here you all are zoom experts people that we never thought would get on zoom or on zoom and having meetings on zoom and socializing we, we, we did a book study on finding yourself in transition because we all were finding ourselves in transition. Robert Grumman's book was quite helpful. And then there was the George, George Floyd murder. And we did a lot of talking about racism and white privilege and what was going on in the world around us and what we may need to change and what we may need to look at differently. And we brought Paul Hassel back in and did the metaphysical romp and Boy, he just brought all kind of new thoughts out for us to think about and take forward. And something that we thought would never happen, online board meetings and other team meetings became regular online events. And the board meets regularly online and our teams are meeting online. And our prayer chaplains and board were making calls, sometimes twice a month to our members and keeping in touch. Do you need any prayer support? And we started, at, we, we advanced the e-newsletter and we put on online registration and connect to online worship services. And we also began expanding our community to other Unity churches. We had guests from Walnut Creek and from San Leandro and from uh, uh, Seattle and Texas and Florida and here and there and everywhere. We did quite a good job, and here we all are, staying in community in 2021. It's so important to stay in community. So what's the plan for this ministry in 2021? Well, I want to tell you just a couple things that, about the plan. And you know, what I hear from the board and what I hear from you all and what I feel myself is stay the course. Stay with what's working. Keep going, this is working. I, as I was writing my talk last night, I had a mental picture of John Duffy on the bow of a ship with his hair blowing in the wind, pointing with his finger forward saying, stay the course, stay the course. And there was Dixie Tyler in the cutest little, as the vice president, in the cutest little sailor outfit with a little sailor cap going, that's right, Reverend Rich, Stay the course, stay the course. Cam Stauffer was writing new announcements about staying the course. She was writing down notes. I agree, stay the course. And Marsha Jakarta was nowhere to be found. And as I looked around, I found her down in the galley praying with the kitchen staff, doing her work, staying the course, keeping things moving. Stay the course, stay virtual through 2021 and begin the process to consider in-person services in July or August of this year. What's it take? It takes a lot to reopen the church. It takes a lot to folk, remain focused on stamina and sustainability and reopen our church in a box and reopen our space. So we're gonna take a look at that. We're gonna start the process. We're gonna ask several of you to join us in, in July and. In August of 2021, we've also began the work on reapplying for the Templeton grant for AV equipment for live streaming so we can live stream and do in-person services at the same time and do it correctly with the right equipment. And, and my gosh, what else is going on? But as Cam said, it made her so happy and it makes me happy to be saying that we're having our first in-person event on Saturday, June the 12th at the UC, Davis Ar uh, the UC Davis Arboretum, the Peter J. Shields Grove is at the West End. Uh, bring a lawn chair with you so you have a seat and bring an extra one if you had one. Come hungry, we're gonna have a fabulous brunch. I'm doing the catering order. We're gonna eat and drink. Well, we're gonna have liquids to drink. Don't think we're gonna, well, if you bring something to drink, it's up to you, I mean, uh, but uh, we're going to eat and drink. And uh, I would ask Kevin right now, Kevin, if you could go into the website and copy the link for the registration for the uh, for the uh, sitting under the old oak tree uh, picnic in June and put it in the chat. You all know how to get to the chat. I know it's difficult if you're on a cell phone, 
but if you aren't on a cell phone or if you are and you can find the chat button once Kevin's put the link in there you can just click on that link and go into the website and sign up for our get together in June so come and 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 let's get together I'm going to talk about our guidelines in just a moment Miss Puma decided to join she's coming to the picnic to meet Lucky uh, uh, when we have the picnic but uh, there's more to come on that, and please join us for that get-together. And I'm going to be coming up to Davis starting in June. I'll be coming up twice a month. I'll be coming up on Thursday, so I'm coming north. And I'll be the in June, I'll be coming up on June the 10th and the 24th. So if you'd like to visit with me, if you want to meet in person, if you'd like to have a cup of coffee, if uh, some of you, I know it's difficult to get out, I'll be coming by to visit with you if you'd like me to. Uh, we'll follow the CDC guidelines. So I'm looking forward to seeing you and being up in the community in person with you. And then the small groups team, what a great team that is with Terry uh, Parker and Audrey Hill and uh, and uh, Donna Tweltridge, uh, they are, we did our survey and I wanna ask anybody who's not completed the survey to go into the uh, website and uh, click the link and complete the survey. We've had 16 responses so far and I'll tell you, we're getting great information from it and I'd like to have some more information about what you'd like and uh, what you wouldn't like and how you'd like to uh, participate in it online in small groups at other people's homes and what you'd like to see in small groups. So as you can see, we're starting to get together, but in small groups. And what we hope to do in 2021 is reintroduce getting together in person in small groups to our community with small events that we can decide, that each group can decide how it's going to meet and what are the parameters for meeting. What are we comfortable with as we go through the rest of 2021 and see where we stand, see where we are, see where the vaccinations are. This summer, I know you've all been, uh, you did a book study, most of you on the book Eye of the Storm. But we're going to do a, a, a class with Robert Hardy. We're going to share it with Walnut Creek, Unity of Walnut Creek, and the other community. And it's a book about resolving conflict. Now, if you remember it, it's a very simplistic book, but it's got the very basics of conflict revolution, resolution. It's going to be easy to get into conflict as we get back in person. We're all bringing stuff with us. We've all been holding on to stuff. We haven't known how to really resolve conflict in the middle of the pandemic. What conflict do we even have to resolve? We need to take a look at that. Eye of the Storm brings out the very basics. And I promise you, it'll be fun with Bob Hardy and I teaching the class. That'll be ready for sign up next week. You can sign up in the e-news. It's gonna be a great class. And our outreach continues. I know that Don Morrill and Steve Ciccato are planning a meeting soon. And we're looking forward to our outreach to the state community around Christmas time where we participated last year and really took care of, I believe it was a, a four, a four, I can't remember, a five, five family unit. Thank you, Marcia. And uh, just, I, I know we made their Christmas wonderful right down to the spices that they wanted for their meal. Thank you for that. And we continue tithing to members of the community on a regular basis to homeless shelters and and to uh, children's shelters and to stake and to other organizations and we're going to in our plan you like our guest speakers apparently we're going to continue having guest speakers we've got martha creek coming next month larry schneider reverend larry will be back um, Reverend Sonia will be around. Sandra Campbell is coming in to speak. You all know Sandra from Unity Temple on the Plaza. Debbie Taylor will be coming in uh, to talk about our stories. And my friend Josephine Furlow will be here on Father's Day. Now, none of you know jo Reverend Josephine, but she's uh, on the board with me at the Urban Church. 
She's been a minister for a long time. She was one of the uh, f founders of the churches up in uh, Michigan and worked with Reverend Mo Ruth Mosley at D uh, Unity Temple in Detroit, Michigan. It's going to be a great Father's Day. So we're planning on staying the staying the course and we've done a lot during the last year to change what we look like we've redesigned our board of directors and decreased the number of trustee in the, trustees on the board we've moved to five board members including me and we're having a good time we're, we're looking forward to meeting and we're having fun and we're focusing on what we talked about with Martha Creek when she came in as our consultant. We're focusing on stamina and sustainability. What do we have the stamina to do and how do we sustain our community? And so we've decreased labor intensive projects and we want to focus on continuing doing that. We're resting in between projects. We're taking a break. We're enjoying. We're having fun creating together. We've had a lot of classes and special services. I'm looking forward to our gratitude circle again this year around Thanksgiving. And I hope you enjoyed the Christmas Eve service. That will be back again and it's on the calendar for December 24th this year. Everybody's invited. We're going to make it a family event this year. If you're going to be away with family, bring the kids. We're going to have fun. And I heard that Santa Claus is planning on being over our area during our service and may stop in. So we'll have to see what happens there. If you're all good, he may bring coal if you're not. So stay good and well behaved, John Duffy. And we've had daily meditations and prayer service of daily meditations by myself and the chaplains. And that continues. The chaplains are meeting Monday through Friday at 12 noon for a half hour prayer service. And it's just delightful. If you've not joined it, join us. And we have, speaking of chaplains, we now have six very active prayer chaplains uh, and the prayer request form. I know that you don't see our chaplains like you did when we were having services on person, but they're still there to pray with you. And so, the prayer request form is on the website. It's now in the chat, in this chat room. You can go in if you'd like some prayer for anything, for healing, celebration, for joy, for prosperity, and request prayer. And the chaplains get your message and check the, the prayer requests every day. And we'll either give you a call or if you'd like me for prayer, put in a request to have me call and they'll notify me. So we've got a very active group of chaplains and we continue to meet monthly and we look forward to serving this community. We've got a brand new website. Thank you, Patricia Wright. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Caroline. My goodness, and the website continues to grow. You, you use the website. If you haven't gone to it, www.unitycenterofdavis.org. You can find a communication form there. You can find the calendar. One of the newest items in the, on the website is the Community Creative Corner. You can find commu uh, uh, projects that have been created by our community. We can see a set of postcards Dixie Tyler has created, and it's beautiful. We all know the creative process of Steve Toccato and some of his paintings are on there. Check out the Community Creative Corner on the west side. It's really nice, and we'll be expanding that. It's hard to add any other pages. I know there were some suggestions about increasing some of the pictures on the website, but we haven't put that in the budget and all of that costs money and upkeep and curation. So we're going to look at those items for next year and see what we need to put on in the budget for next year and how we can increase community involvement. And our virtual services continue with slowly increasing attendance, which is wonderful. We're seeing new people, they're coming, they're joining our events. And I'm pleased to say that we're financially stable. We have money in the bank. Thanks to the generosity of this congregation, we have a wonderful pledge program that works. Thank you. We're a stable church community. 
And as we go forth, I want to encourage you to keep up on the CDC guidelines. They're published everywhere. They're on the web, they're on the TV, they're on the radio, they're up on billboards, they're in stores, they're on store windows. And what I want to say to you now is you get to choose. You have to make your own decision about what you're comfortable with. If, you, if you're comfortable wearing masks continuously, wear masks. If you're comfortable and you've been vaccinated and you are outside and you're social distancing and you don't want to wear a mask and it fits the CDC guidelines, that's up to you. You have to decide what you're comfortable with. You have to decide how you're going to come into community. You have to decide if you're going to get vaccinated if you're not. You have to, you ha get to decide. It's up to you how we be in person in community. Read the guidelines. Decide what's good for you. I've decided. I've decided and I share with you only because I want you to know that I've made a decision. I've been vaccinated. I had two Pfizer vaccinations. It was painless. I didn't get sick afterwards. And I'm starting to venture out. And I'll tell you, it's a different world out there. I'm comfortable having been vaccinated, vaccinated in being outdoors with others without my mask on. I'm not comfortable really being indoors with others without my mask right now, without social distancing. I think I'm okay having been vaccinated, but I'm just not comfortable yet. I don't know what everybody else has done. So I get to choose that being indoors, I wear my mask. You get to choose too. I had lunch with Reverend Kristen from Unity of Walnut Creek on Wednesday, and we were like two little kids. <laughs> we hadn't really, we saw each other once in a year, and uh, I took some materials down to Reverend Kristen from our office, Kristen from our office, and we maintained distance, and we had masks on, and, and we sprayed down the boxes before we exchanged them. So. Wednesday, we got to sit at a Mediterranean restaurant and have falafel and eat without our masks on and laugh and carry on. It was good. It felt good. You get to decide now. You know what? My plan has been to trust Dr. Fauci. I said it last year and I'm saying it again. He hasn't steered me wrong so far. I'm a nurse. I trust the science. It's up to you. You decide who you trust. So I want to make a suggestion to you about going forward, about getting it together. And this comes uh, from Psychology Today. It's a blog update uh, from 42721 by Dr. Gregory J. Jantz. And Dr. Jantz says, you need to make a pandemic recovery plan. You need to make a pandemic recovery plan and move forward with purpose and implement your recovery plan today. What does that plan look like? Well, it looks like a plan that includes your mind, your body, and your spirit. Because we've all had increased levels of worry and fear. You can't deny it. We've all had increased levels of worry and fear. We have to develop, we should develop a recovery plan that can help no matter where we are on the journey. Because the goal of our plan, now this is important, should be incremental improvement. Incremental. No, it can't, ha it doesn't need to happen overnight. All your fears and worries aren't going to go away overnight or in one second. Give yourself credit for incremental improvement. Little by little, we move forward and we get more assured and more comfortable. Actions that you take today to begin your recovery should include harnessing your thoughts and healing your emotions. 
It's been years since the pandemic became an unwelcome intruder in our lives. And so many things seem to be out of our control. And while we're not quite through with it yet, we're seeing the quote unquote proverbial light at the end of the tunnel, I hope. And so with that light comes the realization that we need to create our own pandemic recovery plan. What do we know about the stresses the pandemic has placed on most of us? Do any of these sound familiar to you? I can certainly relate to many of them. Less human interaction and isolation, increased worry and fear, increased depression, stress on personal, spousal, and family relationships, increased social anxiety. Oh, how do I get back out there with people? Financial stress for a lot of people that lost their job, that have been on unemployment. Lower self-esteem, gosh. Have we felt worthless in the middle of the pandemic? And can we let go of that and feel, know that we are the radiant light of God and get back out there with our self-esteem? We've also seen a lot of increased alcohol consumption during the pandemic. Why, I've been sitting here with a glass of water and it looks a lot like vodka. I know because it's clear and it doesn't have an odor to it. And Oh, excuse me. I feel so much better after I've had a glass of it, but not having had a drink in 27 years or so, it would you'd know if I was really doing that. So the reality is that almost all of us had dealt with a, at least a couple of those uh, uh, stresses that were placed on us by the pandemic. And I'm gonna ask you to implement a plan and move forward with that. And so I wanna ask you, and you know this being truth, uh, being members of a truth community, I'm gonna ask you to harness your thoughts. Most of us spend an inordinate amount of time worrying about the things we can't influence and without taking charge of these things, well, or without taking charge of these things, we can't influence them. So Jack Canfield, a leadership expert and co-author of Chicken Soup for the Soul says, you only have control over three things in your life. The thoughts you think, the images you visualize, and the actions you take. That sounds familiar, doesn't it? Your thoughts impact your level of distress, how you cope with stress, and even your life expectancy depends on the level of distress. Healing begins in your head. Your thoughts powerfully and profoundly determine every aspect of your life. And with you, when you, what you tell yourself radically impacts your happiness radically impacts your relationships and radically impacts your physical well-being. Allow your emotions to begin to heal next. Anger, fear, resentment, and guilt are culprits of a toxic emotional state. Certainly we haven't experienced all of them in our lives, but the key is to resolve them. If you've got some fear, if you've got some anxiety, if you've got some anger, Let's begin to resolve them. Life is filled with difficult people and challenging circumstances. In extreme situations, they can cripple us emotionally. How can we work together through them and not let them impede upon living in a happier, stronger, productive state? One thing you can do is sign up for the Eye of the Storm class if you're having trouble with relationships and get a, a real, uh, update on interacting with people, healing resentments and conflict. Another way to heal these emotions is to practice intentional kindness to yourself as well as others. Your tone and your words matter as well as your body language. Your tone, your words, intentional kindness can diffuse otherwise volatile situations. And the third thing we can do, and this is important, nurture your relationships. Create and build healthy relationships. It's easy to say, sometimes challenging to accomplish. Remember that just thoughts and visualizations, your words and actions and body language 
all attract or repel people around you. Put out the energy you want to be surrounded by. Surround yourself with life-giving people. And last, to include in your plan, nourish your body. Place emphasis on a healthy diet, sensible routine fitness, and quality uninterrupted sleep. A healthy body is one of the best things we can strive toward in our request to support our own mental health. Are any of these areas where you can make improvement? As you look toward the remainder of 2021, I'm gonna invite you to make a pandemic recovery plan that focuses on your mind, your body, and your spirit. Remember, be gentle with yourself and others. There's always hope. So as we close today, I want to invite you to register for our in-person program, for our in-person event on June the 12th. Come on over, bring a chair, come hungry, and get together under the old oak tree. We're going to have a good time. Stay well, implement your plan, and have a great week. Thank you for being here today. Thank you, Reverend Rich, for reminding us where we've been, where we are, and the unlimited possibilities of where we will go as individuals and as a community in this coming year. We are blessed and generous community. We hear it over and over in every word that's spoken. And we're especially blessed financially by your generosity. And as always, every week we have that opportunity to reaffirm to ourselves how generous we are and the rich blessings that we receive as a result of that generosity. And as you can see, I think everyone here knows how to make a, gen a, a donation. We thank you. You have it on the screen, your various options, and we encourage you to continue to support this marvelous, marvelous community. And if you would like now, hopefully you will join us in our offering blessing. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, all that I receive. I am grateful. And now for our peace song. on earth and let it begin with me let there be peace on earth a peace that was meant to be with god as creator family all are we let us walk with each other
now, if you'll please join me in the prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. I am that light. The love of God enfolds us. I am that love. The power of God protects us. I am that power. The presence of God watches over us. I am that presence. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Go forth for a wonderful week, and hopefully many of you will stay and join us in our breakout room and for a little social time at the end of the service today. Thank you all for being here.